So hello, today I am going to speak about Taming of the Shrew, a Shakespearean comedy. So um, I'll start with the title, explaining the title, because I've seen many people who do not really understand it. The word shrew is very, very rarely used. It is almost archaic, I think, but it's a derogatory term used for a foul-tempered woman, a very aggressively assertive woman. Uh, so it's very sexist also. But still, this is the explanation for the ta ne, ne, un, for shrew. So the first shrew, or the first supposed shrew, um, was allegedly Socrates' wife, Xanthropy. She was, um, uh, she was this, she was known for her temper, for her spirit, for her, uh, and. Uh, there are many, uh, she has been uh, referred to even in this play. I, uh, I think Petrusha mentions her while talking about uh, Katharina's shrewishness. Katharina, the shrew in this play. So, uh, so in a lot of literature, a lot of folklore, uh, people, uh, what, people uh, tamed the shrew. The the uh, so but it was based on uh, Xanthropa. So there were many shrewish women in uh, I think it was in medieval literature where uh, it involved usually the play's theme uh, uh, was it centered around uh, the shrewish woman who was tamed or domesticated by her husband uh, or her betrothed. Uh, and so she, uh, so one thing but about, uh, so this play is the same thing. It's taming the shrew. The shrew here is Katharina, I repeat. So how they domesticate her. So now, um, I, now some, I'm going to talk about some of the themes of taming of the shrew and also speak about the main character, Catherine, Catherine or Kate. So. Uh, the themes. First, it is an examination of the psychology of relationships. Now, your interpretation of um, the play varies. Every interpretation of the play varies. Some uh, thing, some you can say that it's a dark comedy. If you see Petruchio as a vain, a materialistic. A uh, shallow, um, shallow, pragmatic man who doesn't care for his wife, or it could be a comedy, which would still be it would still be that uh, he Petruchio was pragmatic, he was vain, he was materialistic, but still he loved his wife. So it could vary your interpretation of the play. But it still is about the psychology of relationships because I I don't I know that I do not speak only for myself. I found uh, Lucencio and Bianca's relationship as a refreshing, a welcome change from uh, from uh, Petruchio and Catherine's because um, there was their relationship was based on romantic love because Lucencio. Um, was a st provided a stark, stark contrast to the uh, to uh, what is his name, Petruchio. One could also say he was a foil to him. So his he was swept by romantic love, and uh, as and that is that, and so he was swept by romantic love, and but in the end of the play, we it is the the end of the play. Shows uh, th th just th the end of the play, the scene where all the three, all the the husbands are summoned for their wife, but only per Catherine, surprisingly Catherine, uh, obeys her husband's order, orders, and comes, uh, comes to see what he wanted to talk about. It was a bet actually that whose wife would would obey the the, the orders. But Bianca doesn't. So it's something, it shows, um, it could be a foreshadowing of how uh, Bianca and Lucentio's uh, married life would be. 
where uh, Petrosia was uh, showing uh, was lording over um, uh, Catherine was showing that, that he was her master uh, Lucentio was ingratiating himself with his with Bianca he was um, so it shows uh, so it is again the psychology of relationships uh, it examines it it is also uh, I would like to discuss about Catherine uh, uh, how she was a shrew and why she would be a shrew what could her behavior mean now Catherine's shrewishness was very famous in uh, the city and uh, she was universally, um, she faced universal revulsion because of her sh being a shrew. But what could her shrewishness stem from, from? What could her behavior stem from? I think, I argue, it was misery. It was uh, unhappiness uh, at the treatment. It was jealousy also at the treatment of her, of uh, Bianca by their father. It was misery. It was unhappiness because of her independence. Because uh, of her um, independence and intelligence, she could never fit into her social role properly. She could not be uh, the maiden daughter. Uh, so it is very possible that that could be it. Uh, and I think that's one reason why Shakespeare is so revered because he talked so because this play, an example of many many others, it talks about is um and it goes uh, shows a man who had great great understanding and penetration into the human mind. So this is how I uh, end it. But I do advise one thing. If you're really watching this video, I think you should first read the play to understand how this, because I'm not really talking about the plot of it. So thank you.